The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Good evening and welcome to my state of mind. I am Dan York. New program schedule for 2021. Our program will run weekly, Friday nights on Fox, Saturday nights on the CW at 10 p.m., and then after the 11 o'clock news on WPRI 12. The new year uh, brings us some challenges, no doubt. And after what happened this week, everything that was planned for this show is scrapped. I need to lean on a guy whose thoughts on Washington, the Trump administration, and the like have made the most sense to me, and that is Providence College professor Joe Camarano. So he and I will have our own version of a fireside chat this evening about what we've experienced this week. Um, doubt there are very many of you who don't know what happened at our nation's capital on Wednesday, but uh, a complete wrap-up, as much as you can do, at press time when we record the show on Thursday, uh, from the network, and then we'll talk about it. Follows. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. In the early hours of Thursday morning, the joint session of Congress affirmed President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris's Electoral College win after defeating objections to Arizona and Pennsylvania's votes. The no's have it. It came hours after Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol building, some making it as far as Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. Others reached the Senate floor. Capitol Police drew their guns as people tried to enter the House. Four people died during the chaos, three from medical emergencies. One woman was shot and killed. Members of the House and Senate had been evacuated from their chambers. This is banana republic crap. Wisconsin GOP Congressman Mike Gallagher sheltered in place in his office. Mr. President, you have got to stop this. Earlier Wednesday, President Trump continued his attacks on the 2020 election. We will never give up. We will never concede. Mr. Trump's Twitter account was later locked after posting this video message to his supporters. So go home. We love you. You're very special. The violence began shortly after some Republicans raised their first objection, an effort to show support for President Trump, even if it didn't have the votes to succeed. And it gives credibility to a dark chapter of our history. Early this morning, the White House released a statement from President Trump saying though he disagrees with the outcome of the election, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. Joe Camerano, political scientist from Providence College, joins me. He's no stranger to our broadcasts. And as we begin the new year, you know, I had a plan actually to, to tackle uh, multiple matters uh, today on, on a local basis, including the national political crisis that we have. But I just kind of need to settle in and, and, and pick Joe's brain over what we experienced yesterday. Uh, it almost feels funny, Joe, to see somebody for the first time in the new year and say, Happy New Year. Uh, I think I think we still have to say things like Happy New Year. So Happy New Year to you. And Happy New Year to you and your view viewers as well. Uh, it's, uh, it, it can still be a Happy New Year, but the, the jolt that America took yesterday um, needs some adjustment. Uh, what, what is your gut telling you about where we are. I was trying to conjure up what this is analogous to. And in the United States, really there wasn't a whole lot to go to go on. And there, you know, there was a bonus army back when Hoover was president who, who tried to storm the Capitol and MacArthur sort of quelched it with violence. Um, and, but I thought about Russia um, back in the 90s when there was an attempted coup and they were shooting into the parliament and Boris Yeltsin stood up. And I also thought about Pickett's Charge at Gettysburg, um, that famous high watermark of the Civil War for the Confederacy. I think that's what yesterday was. I think it really marks the last gasp of what has become a very nationalistic extremism that's a segment, but not the majority of Trump support. Look, a, a young lady lost her life. Uh, we know that. There were a few others who, 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 who died uh, based on uh, their, their health issues uh, and the trauma, I guess, of the day. There was a large crowd. Anytime a large crowd like that gathers, you can have that kind of, um, that kind of sad part of the story. The, 
they didn't come in with guns. The I, it's the only thing I've come to to try to to try to calm my thought down about what happened yesterday. That they didn't come in with guns. They came in breaking glass. They came in. Um, there, there's some evidence, I think, that some Capitol Police actually let them in. I mean, there was, so we have to talk about that response, you know, the, the, mili- the actual law enforcement and military response. Is, 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 is that a proper way to think about this, to actually try to mitigate the, the, the situation by saying at least they didn't come in weaponized? I, I, I don't know. I, I, you know, I do think that it was fortunate that there weren't weapons that were used with the exception of law enforcement. Um, and we'll see what happened with the Air Force veteran who, who was shot and died. Um, and, you know, yeah, I, but I also, no, I think there's some other good things that happened. Uh, first of all, and we'll probably talk about this, the Georgia Senate races, particularly Warnock, uh, is an extraordinary milestone. And what struck me was the contrast between his victory speech and what President Trump did to incite these people to go up and essentially raid the Capitol. Um, he basically said, I promise you that no matter whether you supported me or not, I'm going to represent every single one of you. And so we had that. And then we had Mike Pence and Mitch McConnell and other Republicans stand up and say, this is wrong and it will not stand. That's the good thing from yesterday, that not only did they not bring weapons, but the response for the vast majority of public officials on the Republican side, on the Trump support side, was civil and exactly what you would expect in a country like ours. Yeah, I want want to dig into those concepts deeper. I mean, the, the, the Georgia election is is so dramatic uh, and so and so compelling. So let's leave let's leave that for our next segment. The the, uh, the idea being promulgated on places like Fox News and others uh, yesterday that this is uh, this is just a, uh, a hostage taking of a legitimate uh, peaceful assembly that Antifa, you know, Black Lives Matter. Uh, kind of, you know, stage this event. I'm seeing more and more uh, evidence already, uh, journalistic evidence, that that's not going to hold water. That, And the very idea that this was, you know, broken glass and climbing on walls and and and, and the kind of ad hoc, in, you know, move on the Capitol leads me to think that it is wholly legitimate to suggest that the President of the United States motivated that behavior. Uh, versus, it's just hard for me to get my mind around the idea with the intelligence that we have for these kinds of things, that that was part of an organized chatter attack versus something that just said, yeah, let's go to the Capitol, and it just got out of hand, right? Well, I do think there was was probably some kind of quasi-organized, although they're not a very well-organized group, um, you know, through the Proud Boys or affiliated groups. I I don't know. I have to say, worse than President Trump was his son, Donald Jr. I watched the clip of him inciting the riot. uh, And Ivanka actually was there as well. And it was like, you're going to go, you're going to sort of stand up for my dad and you're not going to take this. This is not going to happen. Um, you know, I, I do think there is probably coordination, but I don't have any evidence. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The, you know, the Trump administration, the Trump White House, the Trump family has been lying and lying and lying because they think life is a game and it's not. There's a difference between coordination and, and, and usurping the intent, the idea that some were trying to suggest last night, well, you know, this is not, this is not reflective of the 98% of the people who were there. You know, well, first of all, 98% of the people there couldn't get into the building. I mean, that's how big the crowd was. I mean, so, like, no kidding. Uh, anyway, uh, there'll be more details, and there'll be there'll be investigations here, and and, and we'll we'll we'll, we'll yeah, on that. I just want to I want to protect the identity, so I'm not going to tell you exactly how I know this person, but I know a person pretty well 
who about three weeks ago told me, wait, something's coming, wait, something's coming, wait, something's coming. And I wonder whether yesterday was what he was talking about. All right. Uh, when we come back, we, we, we got to talk about the historical nature of this versus the, the, the executive branch and, and whether Congress itself will, will, will hold the president accountable for this. And then we'll talk about this very important development uh, in Georgia, which has now changed uh, the entire complexion of, of our government. We'll be right back with Joe Camarano, political scientist from Providence College. Stay with us. Joe Camarano, political scientist from uh, Providence College. Uh, listen, this, uh, you admitted at the top, there's not a lot of precedent for evaluating what happened at the Capitol yesterday. Uh, almost immediately, as uh, elected officials in the House, at least, were holed up, uh, there were calls for impeachment. Uh, our own David Cicilline tweeted out a call for impeachment. I, on the radio, on WPRO in the afternoon, of course, uh, talked to Jim Langevin uh, during, during the event at 5.30 in the afternoon. Uh, he had been in his office, thankfully, um, and ironically, COVID and, and the, the lower numbers of people who were allowed into the House chamber for the joint session uh, to evaluate the certification of the Electoral College votes, uh, that low number kept the number of people who were actually in the chamber down. And, and you worry about Jim Langevin, of course, bound to a wheelchair for most of his adult life. You know, how, how, did, you know, how did he get out? He was calm, cool, collected. He had been watching uh, in, in, in the office. But there are calls for impeachment. Uh, you know, we've got 13 days of this presidency left. Is there, is there a political solution to this? Uh, should, should, should Donald Trump have a punctuation now to his tenure of, of that nature? Is it something that can be done quickly? Does it bleed over to a Biden administration? Tell me what the politic and the structure of that is, if at all. Well, I do think uh, that the 25th Amendment could be invoked. Uh, the way President Trump has been talking about Mike Pence and the reaction of Mike Pence last night um, suggests that Pence knows that something has to be done. The warnings from Mary Trump about this is going to be even worse if nobody stops him. Um, she, she said, asserted that yesterday um, because of his inability to accept losing, because essentially, you know, that's his whole goal is not to lose. And, um, you know, I, so you have that. Impeachment is impractical. Um, and to, to be honest, it, it just increases more their status with his, with his most ardent supporters. Uh, I, I think ignoring him, I think... Um, you know, bureau bureaucrats ignoring any commands um, until Biden comes in. I think, you know, th th these are norms that, that we should fall upon or the 25th Amendment. Well, you know, based on, you know, based on that thinking, I think the thing that does worry me and, and makes me lean toward a 25th Amendment move um, is that the world is watching. And, you know, we've got enemies. And you know, to suggest that, that, that top bureaucrats and then de facto military leadership uh, and strategists and security folks and, and intel folks should be ignoring the president of the United States. Uh, it, it's, not, it's not congruent for, for, for our, our, our health individual. Uh, they have a solemn obligation to preserve and serve the people. Um, and, you know, just like when Nixon was going crazy, uh, the, you know, Defense Department was told if he calls and orders anything, don't do it until you talk to the Secretary of Defense. Um, so, you know, I, I think that it's, it's perfectly proper. Uh, if, if, remember, this is the Nuremberg defense, you know, I was just doing my job. No, you have to say no when you know it's wrong. Right. Um... Look, we, we, you and I stop predicting things <laughs> four years ago. Um, it almost feels like January 20th is two years from now. It, 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 just trying to survive the Trump news cycles right now. And, and uh, 
Do you do you predict that there'll be some traction for a 25th Amendment move here? I think there already is some traction. Um, I don't know if it's going to unfold. I think for Trump, remember, he's motivated by not being humiliated and his behavior may become a little more moderated uh, or a little less frequent because he knows that he very well could be removed and that would be humiliating for him. Well, it has a lot to do with how he comports himself in-house too, right? So mm -hmm. uh, at, at this point, uh, uh, look, he knows he's, uh, Here's the question that I think we're all going to have. Does he understand that he stepped in it? You know, based on his one minute Twitter response yesterday, uh, he didn't know that he didn't understand that he stepped in it. Uh, I, I actually made the comment on Facebook after watching that video that that's evidence for a 25th Amendment action that, you know, I won by a landslide. Let's just say that there are these mysterious votes that were added or, or not counted. Uh, it wasn't a landslide. So you know, the man's insane right now. And whether that sanity was ever there or not, it's not an issue. All right. Uh, when we come back, Georgia on our minds. Stay with us. Camarano, our political scientist from Providence College. I want to talk about Georgia here for a couple of minutes. I'd like to talk about Georgia for a couple of months. I mean, this is fascinating what's happened in Washington. But, you know, on the president's stability, one of the things I think is, is interesting about this is, look, do you, regular viewers of this show know that you and I were no fans of Donald Trump. I mean, that is an understatement. Uh, when you talk about Mary Trump, she's already written a book, you know, about how crazy her uncle is. Uh, the folks who have already thought that he isn't stable, that would be you, me, Mary Trump, and so many others, may not have the credibility to talk about the 25th Amendment matter. In other words, it's the folks who have have silently suffered or supported the president who see problems who will have the credibility to talk right. about right i mean that's yeah, right and you know i don't count we may we may be making sense but we don't count that's right and that's why i said mike pence is the pivot here that i trust mike pence to make a judgment i may not i may not think he has the courage um but i i trust that he has the judgment to do the right thing for the country. Because I don't think, I think he is a patriot. Well, certainly the loyalty he's shown the president would be credibility for, 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 this, for this decision. I only have uh, three or four minutes here. Uh, in the midst of all of this, this, this trauma, you know, Mitch McConnell's speech for the most part last night about how this just wasn't going to happen, meaning this, this election just wasn't going to be changed by this ceremonial process being abused the, the way it was. Um, I got to give the guy credit, you know, amidst losing, amidst losing his power, it, it, in the middle of the loss of his power, one of the, 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 the most profound acts, he, he stamps his majority leader career with was standing up for the right thing. Give the guy credit, right? Uh, I, I do sense that McConnell understands that we have to change our politics. Uh, and it was a little bit of a profile in courage last night. We, we know he has a personal friendship with Joe Biden. We also know that Joe Biden has almost universally picked the more moderate person to head up the cabinet level departments than the more liberal person. And like Merrick Garland is the least liberal choice, but also the best, the most rock solid choice. Um, and so, you know, I sense that there might be some kind of more moderate coming together. And I think Mitchell, uh, Mitch McConnell gets that. Georgia sending two Democrats to, 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 to bring that 50 number. Of course, the vice presidential tie leaves the Democrats with, with the, the majority power there. Um, I want to make the comment that this is back to the future. Remember, from the Civil War all the way up through the early 80s, Georgia always sent two Democrats to the Senate. Okay. <laughs> Different kind of Democrats. But, but I, I do have to, I do think both of them are interesting. They're both indications of a repudiation of Donald Trump because both the Republican senators were very loyal supporters. And Raphael Warnock is a huge historical event. Uh, you know, for all sorts of reasons. His, what, his, his, his background? Uh, First African-American senator from the state of Georgia. Right. Well, I mean, um, 
that that in of itself is 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 historically profound but uh, he he's uh, sort of a return to that decent civil moderate u.s senator democrat or republican that i grew up watching un unpolished never having elected office ever prior to uh never being involved in politics john ossoff has you know run for congress he he's been involved in campaigning all his life really really touched up his game really well right. give him credit he you know he beat uh, uh senator purdue who i think had a lot more credibility than kelly leffler did so i mean that's why you had that thirty thousand vote difference i think between the two democrats i think the challenge was more difficult for ossoff than it may have been for warnock but either way you, you got two different kind of guys who tag teamed this thing in, in a unique opportunity the way this whole thing fell um yeah, you know, I, I wasn't predicting, but I was a little surprised they both won. I thought one might win. I thought both might lose. I didn't think both would win. Um, I got a few seconds here. Okay. Can we, can we put a signature on this week, or we just got to just... Yeah, I, you know, I, I would say this is a week where we're beginning to remember that politics is not a game. Um, that politics is about our lives and real lives and people die when we're irresponsible. Leave it there. Uh, Joe, thanks. Appreciate uh, your perspective. Uh, final word when we come back, Stiglitz. You know, amidst everything that's going on in Washington, there's a lot of things happening here in Rhode Island. We have a new Speaker of the House, and we may, may have a new governor. Uh, governor Raimondo at this time is more than just rumored to be interested in moving on to take the position of Secretary of Commerce for the Biden administration, as you're seeing this program on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that may have been made public and been confirmed. It may not have, but it's close. We'll see if it comes to fruition, and a whole lot more next week. And don't forget, still every day in the afternoon on WPRO, weekdays 3 till 6. Have a great weekend. Good night.